So this talk is entitled Once Around Forty Eridani. Forty Eridani is a star that is relatively close by to the sun and is uh, one of the ones that I think is most interesting for the possibilities of finding life. It's called Kaed, and it's in the constellation of Eridanus, the river just to the right of the base of Orion the Hunter. So you can traverse from Rigel at the bottom corner there, work your way to Beta Eridani and along the river constellation. And then just off to the side there, you find this star 40 Eridani or Omicron 2 Eridani, depending on which catalogue you're using. It turns out that it's a very interesting for a number of reasons. It's a triple star system, and you can see all three members very easily uh, through a telescope. It's relatively nearby, just 17 light years from the sun. And so when we photograph it, we can see the main bright star and the two little companions in uh, amateur level images, which is great. Now, those three elements compared to the sun, they're all smaller stars. We have A, so 40 Eridani A, Kaed itself. It's got a proper name allocated to it. And the uh, characteristics of Kaed are that it's an orange dwarf star, but it's that means it's K class and it's a K zero. So it's right at the hottest end of the K class. It goes zero to nine, where zero is hottest and nine is coldest. So 5,300 degrees Kelvin. Uh, so relatively warm for a K type star. The reason for that is that it's 84% of as massive as the sun and give, that gives about half the total power output because it's a bit smaller and a bit cold, cooler. The other two stars, B is a white dwarf. It was actually the very first white dwarf star to be spotted. Um, we spotted this star when they were studying 40 Eridani, saw that there was a faint white star there, but because they were able to measure the distance to the system and they could use the dynamics of the system to work out the mass of the star, they found that this was a very small, lightweight, faint, but white star and hence the name White Dwarf Star was given to it. It was too small to be a blazing hot white star, um, but nevertheless seemed to have that very high white hot temperature. So when we look at it, it's quite faint, um, and it's uh, just over half the mass of the sun, but ninth magnitude. The third member is a little red dwarf star, and red dwarfs are very faint indeed. This one's 11th magnitude, just 20% the mass of our sun. Smallest red dwarf would be about 7.5%, anything smaller than that. And it's not really a star at all anymore. They can't generate the pressures and temperatures to carry out nuclear fusion. And this one is only ticking along on economy. Its power output is just 1% of the mass of the uh, sun. Now, overall, this is quite an old system, um, 5.6 billion years, so around 1 billion years older than the sun. And that's interesting because it means it's any potential sort of planets and life on those planets has had a considerable head start. Now, if we look at the orbits of them, we have the main star, A, Kaed, and then B and C here are orbiting around each other about 35 astronomical units apart. So they're about as distant from each other as Neptune is from the sun, and they take 230 years to complete a lap. So relatively quick in terms of things that happen in the, the realm of stars. And between the two of them, they orbit round as a pair, 400 astronomical units away from the A star, and that's much slower, 8,000 years. So if we look at 40 Eridani A, the main star, half the power output of the sun means that the habitable zone is relatively close in at around about 0.6 of an astronomical unit. And uh, that's around about the position of Venus. Now, in fact, on the diagram here, it's got Vulcan written there. And the reason for this is because 40 Eridani is supposed to be the home world 
of Mr. Spock, the Vulcan from Star Trek, more of which later. So the B and C stars are kind of shown in the diagram there as being bright points of light in the sky. That's what you would see if you were near to Eridani A. These guys, fairly faint stars, but at 400 AU, you'd still see them about as bright as Venus looks in the sky to us. So quite bright. What about planets around 40 Eridani A then? Well, in 2018, I think that an 8.5 Earth mass super Earth planet was discovered in an orbit taking just 42 days to go round. Now that put it really quite close in, too close to be habitable and be getting nine times the heat flux that the Earth does. So very toasty indeed. But there's a problem with this, which is that the star rotates in 42 days on its spin axis. And it may well be that it is the rotation of the star that's being picked up here rather than uh, the orbit of a planet. So we're not sure about this at the moment. Now, I mentioned uh, this one, Forti Eridani, the home of Mr. Spock and Vulcan. So we are still searching to prove the existence of a planet orbiting around there. It would be quite entertaining if uh, we did find a planet and that Gene Roddenberry was proved right again, uh, as he has been a number of times with these things. Um, but so popular is uh, Forti Eridani A as a home for planets that the Dune series has uh, a planet there um, and uh, many others. And I did want to mention this one because I've just read this book, Andy Weir's Project Hail Mary. It's a really good read and Forti Eridani A B Planet B orbiting around star A is home to the ammonia-loving rock creatures um, illustrated below. I won't tell you any more because it's a bit of a spoiler if I do, but I just say read the book. It's absolutely fantastic. And um, these guys, as I say, they're ammonia-living. A slide from one of my other talks there about ammonia-based life, but uh, that's for another day. So thanks very much for listening. I hope uh, you've enjoyed that. And do look at my other talks about Tau Ceti and Epsilon Eridani, other stars of interest in the nearby part of our universe. Thanks very much.